We're in CS6 and we're going to use the pattern tool and make another pattern. So we'll go to File, New, and we'll call this Pattern Bug and your last name. Letter size, inches for units, and under the advanced, make sure it's RGB. OK. And hit the Control R to get your rulers and take your black arrow and pull a vertical guideline. Move in close and get rid of the white background. Just have a black stroke. And first we'll do um, with the ellipse tool and the center. Make sure the center is right on the guideline. The gray. OK, and click off. And if we want this to be locked, we go on the layer and we can put the lock there so it's not won't be in our way. And then we'll go in close. We'll select where cl uh, clicked off of the oval. We'll select a black. And we can start drawing from the top. Kind of a wing. OK, and then we'll smooth it out. Smooth it out. Smooth it. And get your smooth tool. OK, when it, when it looks pretty smooth, we can take it and we can reflect it and make a copy and the right arrow. OK, just like that. And we actually can select this one and this one and we can join them using this tool, Shape Builder. Go to one and click to the other and they should join. Maybe they're not touching. I think they're joined now. OK, so we have this and we can make a little holding my shift here. can make a little head on that and we can make some legs with this little paintbrush tool. Got the black. Oop, I think we, here we are. And I'll make it a quarter on the stroke weight. Here. Quarter. OK. And click off and go over here. OK. So we can take these two. We can group them. Control G. We can reflect them. Make a copy. Move it to the other side. And on our uh, layer palette, we can move it all the way to the back. OK, now we can make some funny looking little antennae here into fear. OK, there we go. So now we have this funny looking little bug. OK, this, we can make this a little smaller if we want. Here, OK. So we can take everything on this bug and group it group it again because I didn't have that locked. OK, we take the bug, put it up in the corner, control C, and we lock this layer. We make a new layer. We take this layer off, control V. 
Okay, so here's our bug on a new layer. And we go to the Pattern tool and we make it. Okay, now there's a straight repeat of the bug with no space. We're going to take this and we're going to take the bug, select it, and we're going to right click, transform, reflect on the horizontal, make a copy, and move it over, and you can actually move it up too. So it's a kind of a vertical half drop, and it's going up. Okay, so <clears throat> back up a little bit here, and we'll say save a copy, bug, vertical, half drop, or vertical drop. Okay, say all right. Okay, so then we'll hit size tile to the art. Okay, so now we're going to go in and make a little more space here. So we're going to hit this in the corner. We're going to open this up a little. We're going to go up over here on the top. We're going to go down over here. Okay, so we're going to try to grab one of these bugs. Going to move it up and we're going to turn it around. Okay, and we can pull it in a little bit here. We can make it smaller again. Okay, we'll grab the original one. We don't want it to be straight up or straight down. We want them to be like kind of like they're moving all over the place, okay? So we take this and we go transform and we go reflect and we say copy. So we made a copy and we've got this one over here. Okay, like that. And we say again, transform, reflect, and this time I'm doing a vertical copy and I'm moving it up. Okay, it looks a lot like the other one that I have there and I want it to be, I don't want it to look the same so I'll go to one of the corners and I'll have him moving like this and right away I'll pull this in a little here there looks pretty good uh, have to watch your spacing a little maybe I can move this in a little here and then maybe I can take this bug here and I can maybe turn it a little, put them up in there. There. Looks pretty good. Maybe this one. Oops. Okay. Maybe take this one and move them up a little here. Okay, and then you back up a little. Okay, buggy, buggy, bugs. Save a copy. Okay, non-directional bugs. Okay. So then you say done. And then you have your first one you pull out. Okay, you've got your bugs, so you would grab this, go on the layer, okay, and 
control C, control F, and control C, control F. Put one unstroke unfilled rectangle in the front for the cropping, and another one we'll put some color in. Okay, there's some color for the background. So now we're ready to crop it. We'll get in a little closer. Okay, we have our unstroke unfilled box on the top. We grab it all, we get the pathfinder, crop. Okay, we take it and we put it in here and we make a swatch. Okay, we have a single here and we have our little rectangle tool and we can make it three, tab five, and fill it. Okay, there's the bugs going one way, going the other way. I have to have the black arrow. Okay, now we take out the non-directional bugs you see there's the single repeat rectangle inside. Okay, so we look at it here, open it up, go to the back, control C, control F, and move it up to the front. Go to the bottom again, control C, control F, put another color in there. Okay, I'll make this a lot lighter. All right, so then we grab them all and we crop it. Okay, and then we take it and we drop it in to the swatch palette. And then we make a three by five and we fill it. And there we have our non-directional bugs. And now we'll take our two in repeat swatches, hold the shift down, go up to Effect, go to Distort and Transform, Zigzag, and Preview, and increase the segments, and maybe decrease the length, and if you want them smooth or corner, say OK. And this one is done. You've made your little bug. You've got a non-directional one with a colored background. And you've got a two-way. OK. You could type in underneath. This one's two-way. Two-way. Okay, and this one is non-directional. So then you would save it, and you would call it Pattern Pat Bug, your last name. Save it as an AI, and again, PDF compatible. It should be RGB color mode. Always save it in whatever the uh, oldest copy of Illustrator is that you have. We are working in 6. If you're working somewhere else in a lower version, always save it in the lower version. Okay, because if you open up a lower version, you have no trouble ever opening it up in a higher version. But you can't save it in a CS6 and go open it up in a CS3 or a CS4 or a CS5. Okay? Alright.